The Winona Sports Network welcomes you to Thunder Talk. Thanks to Arcadia Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Get all the dirt from Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Direct from Dan Bailey. Hey, race fans. Welcome to another edition of Thunder Talk on the Winona Sports Network, 99.3 FM and streaming live on WinonaRadio.com. I'm Dan Bailey. This is episode 334 of Thunder Talk, and I'm quite excited because we have a big weekend coming up at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, and it all starts tonight. Friday night, May 10th, it is Leighton Media Bush Light Night at Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Leighton Media and One Owner Radio have been a huge promoter of dirt track racing at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, even before it was Mississippi Thunder Speedway, back into the 90s when it was just tri Speedway. So it's great to have another Leighton Media One Owner Radio Night at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, and it's Bush Light tonight, not only can you see all weekly classes competing on the big third mile? You can also have some fun watching spectator races tonight. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. Racing starts at 7 o'clock. And this evening, you can get a chance to win a pair of two tickets to the Knoxville Nationals. So if you want to enjoy some uh, great action at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, make sure that you join us tonight. And then tomorrow night... Evening number two of great action on the big third mile as Aces Racing and AMA District 23 and AMA District 16 bring the two-wheelers to the big third mile. And that's what we're going to focus on with tonight's program. Joining me via telephone is rider of the number 83 machines. I'll explain that in just a moment. Jason Fox. Jason, first of all, welcome to Thunder Talk. Thanks for having me, Dan. Always good to talk to you. So I mentioned machines in the plural. You are one of those crazy motorcycle racers who competes in multiple divisions on multiple bikes. Tell the listeners what sort of bikes you will be riding this Saturday at Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Yeah, we got a two bikes, the Harley Sportster to run in the, the Hooligan classes. And then I also have a, a Honda 450 motocross bike that we got converted to flat track with some 19 inch wheels and lower suspension and all that that I like riding too. So I want to talk all about the action that we're going to see Saturday on the big third mile at Mississippi Thunder Speedway. But first, let's talk about you. How did you get into riding cycles in the first place? And how did you get into riding or racing flat track? Yeah, uh, motorcycles are, are awesome in my family, right? Ever since I was four, I started on a PW50 just, you know, riding around my grandpa's house. Got into riding motocross when I was about 13. Turns out I was terrible at that. Crashed <laughs> quite a bit. Didn't do very well. Rode that up through high school and then kind of gave motorcycles a break. Tried out some go-karting for a, a year or so. I wasn't any good at that either. But around that same time, my dad actually got the flat track bug. bug. He tried that out. I thought he was crazy because these flat track guys going, you know, wide open around dirt ovals with no front brakes. And it looks like slick tires. It looked pretty scary to me, so I said there was no way I was going to do that. And, uh, of course, two races later, watching him do it and have a lot of fun, I had to give it a shot. Tried it out and got hooked just like you did. So how long have you been racing flat track on two wheels? My first stint in flat track, we did about three or four years, and then I gave it up to do some adult things, bought a house, got married, had some kids, and then around 2019, I think, when the hooligan stuff really started taking off, I got back into it and found a 2013 Sportster for a pretty good deal that was all blown up, spent a few months putting it together and uh, getting it ready to go for flat track, and that got me back into it. And obviously, this Saturday night, the Rampage by the River 2 taking place at Mississippi Thunder Speedway makes the term flat track a bit of a misnomer because obviously, MTS, very high banked speedway designed for cars, but it's very conducive for motorcycle racing, especially when you get onto those bigger bikes like you're going to be bringing down your Harley. Yeah, for sure. This is a, a great event. Luckily enough, I was able to squeeze this one in, and this is a, yeah, I've got a couple stars on, on the calendar for me to make sure we go back to Mississippi Sunday. $2,500 purse for the hooligans, and it's unfortunate that they're called hooligans because that makes them sound like, you know, it's just a bunch of, well, hooligans out there on the track. But the hooligan class has progressed over the past 10, 12, 15 years, and it is some serious racing action. As a matter of fact, tomorrow night we will have the Grand National Hooligan Championship Series, which is a coast-to-coast, -coast, east to west, north to south series with four different regions and some really, really stout competition. Give us some details about the specific Harley that you're going to be riding because the Hooligans are bigger bikes. These are the big road bikes that you might see somebody driving down the highway. 
and you guys have taken them onto the track and converted them into full-fledged racing machines. Yeah, exactly. That's what they start at, right? Some of the rules are that you have to start with a street-legal road-going motorcycle, and then we can do very little uh, modifications to the chassis and stuff like that. But really, anything you can bolt on as far as performance goes, you got some people... Big old motors built to the hills that can uh, turn some curious horsepower, and then you got me who's just uh, running whatever I can get bolted on. Um, I'm actually running a 2013 Sportster, so it's not the most preferred one. It's a little bit heavier. I think our weight minimum is supposed to be 370 pounds. I'm almost 100 pounds heavier than that, so yeah, giving everyone a, a little advantage there. But we do still have uh, some of your quote-unquote hooligans that show up, some people that like to have a good time, but vast majority of the folks are pretty serious about it. This has become a pretty legit series that they've got going and going to do my best to get to the front on that on Saturday. And these are big bikes. I mean, we're not talking, you know, dual sport 250s. These are the smallest engine size you guys can run is, what, 750, right? Yeah, I think for the Grand National Hooligan, you can run at 649, so 650 and up. Uh, the Minnesota Hooligans, we do 750, so I think most everyone there or above. Yeah, you got to start with something around 750 cc's. Yeah, I got that Sportster weighing about 470 pounds, so they're, they're pretty big and uh, fun to top side with. So what is the Sportster when it rolls out of the showroom back in 2013? What engine is in that yeah, one? Yeah, it started off as an 883, mine's the 1200 right now. Yeah, so 1,200 cc's. I mean, these are big bikes, and they are uh, really laying out some uh, horsepower. And when you get onto a big track like this, you guys can turn some amazing laps. In addition to you guys racing your hooligans, there will be a full fleet of AMA district classes, ranging from little kids on the bikes like you said you got started on, little 50 cc P-dubs or 65 cc bikes up to 250s, 450s. There's age groups, uh, riders ranging in age from five, six, seven years old up to 50, 55, 60, 70 years old, right? And it's very similar to stock car racing in that, of course, when you're on the track, it's very competitive, but when you're off the track, back in the pits, it's like one big family, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's the best part about best part about flat track, in my opinion. Can't think of a race where we didn't go and have a good time laughing before the race or after the race, or even helping people out changing tires. You need a, a sprocket or a, a tool that you forgot to bring. Everyone's happy to help. We want to beat each other out on the track. We don't any, want anyone sitting on the sidelines. You were kind of trying to uh, gently rib yourself and saying that you're just out there with a smaller bike that's heavy, but you have enjoyed some success. Let's let's tell the race fans about some of the success that you've enjoyed through the years with your flat track efforts? I wasn't so good at motocross, like I mentioned, but for whatever reason, these flat track things, I uh, I can figure out. Someone somewhere put it in my head that I can go fast, and I've been doing my best. Uh, last year was probably the best year I ever had. Started off at Mississippi Thunder. I've got a podium at the Grand National Hooligan Race, so that was a really good start. Then I ran three classes throughout the District 23 season, Open Twin, Over 40, and Hooligan. And I won all three of those. So yeah, it was a, a perfect season for me. So three AMA district championships there, a lot of race wins. You've also won on the concrete. Obviously, Saturday will be on the clay, on the dirt, but you've also won on concrete, haven't you? Yeah, those concrete tracks are a lot of fun. It's kind of the complete opposite of what we'll be doing Saturday. A small, full ring, hockey rink size track. Had a pretty good luck this last year or this last winter on those. We won down in Iowa and got second at Flat Out Friday. Uh, that was in Milwaukee in February, and you won't believe this, Dan, but I haven't touched my bike since February, so yeah, i got to get going on that. <laughs> that Flat Out Friday event, that is pretty impressive. I mean, it's in the arena where the Milwaukee Bucks play. I, I think I heard that, you know, they're upwards of ten to 12,000 people, uh, you know, congregating there to watch flat track racing on concrete so it's it's really huge event that must have been a highlight to do so well at an event like that in front of such a huge crowd for sure i think i heard both of my fans in the stands cheering <laughs> for me i didn't have a lot of friends there you know being a minnesota guy in wisconsin so yeah we tried to take their lunch money i won the heat race and finished a close second behind terry vessel he was on that night so this saturday the rampage by the river two at mississippi thunder speedway gives you a big old third mile high banked track to really let that sportster stretch its legs and then the following weekend we're heading over to new ulm on a track that's somewhere between a quarter mile and maybe three-eighths of a mile that's much flatter 
than Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Later on this year, we'll be at a kart track in Cannon Falls. So which sort of track do you tend to enjoy the most? Do you do you enjoy the bigger ones? Do you like the smaller ones? Do you like the flat ones? Do you like the banking? Or you just have a good time whenever you can get out there? Yeah, definitely. I don't dislike any of them. I seem to do better on those short tracks. But yeah, I, I, I did pretty good at Mississippi Thunder last year, so I'm looking forward to getting on that one. I heard that they've... Uh, Made some improvements to the track. Yeah, I, I like them all. That New Orleans is one of the most beautiful venues we go to. I'm excited to try out that Cannon Falls new track. Yeah, I'm ready to get our season going. And I want to give you an opportunity to mention who helps you out. You said you got to get to work on that bike before you come down here. Is it just you turning the wrenches, or do you have family members who help out, or sponsors who help you get to and from the races each and every event? Yeah, I don't have any sponsors. I've got. I've been lucky enough to meet um, some great friends. Uh, that helped me out along the way. The biggest is for sure Joel Gulbrinson with JRG Performance. Um, yeah, he's, a, he's a big help. All the friends at the track, right? You're one of them that's always there with a smiling face. But yeah, Rob Press is my partner in crime. We always sit together, travel together, and bang bars racing against each other. My wife gives me a lot of support and lets me, you know, go have fun with my friends and uh, my dad and Hell's Mosquitoes. But the biggest motivating factor I think I have is coming home to my girls when they're never impressed with any of the trophies or <laughs> checks we bring back. I always got to do better next time. The youngsters will bring you right back down to uh, your humble state, won't they? They do. Well, Jason, I appreciate you uh, taking some time to join us this week on Thunder Talk. We wish you the best of luck, not only this Saturday during the Rampage by the River 2 at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, but through the remainder of the 24 season. Thanks for joining us again this week on episode 334 of Thunder Talk. Thanks a lot, Dan. Hey, race fans, don't forget tonight, Leighton Media Bush light night at Mississippi Thunder Speedway and tomorrow night it's the Rampage by the River 2 at Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Tonight you're going to see cars tomorrow night you're going to see motorcycles and I guarantee you will enjoy all of it. For all the details you can point your favorite internet browser to the official Mississippi Thunder Speedway website MississippiThunder.com. Check out all their social media efforts, Twitter Instagram, Facebook, etc. You can get all the details on start times etc. We hope to see you at Mississippi Thunder Speedway if you want to hear this edition of Thunder Talk in its entirety, or any of the past editions of Thunder Talk, you can also point your favorite internet browser to YouTube, do a simple search for Thunder Talk with Dan Bailey, and there you have it. You Again, a big thank you to Jason Fox. Best of luck to all the car racers tonight and the motorcycle racers tomorrow night, and we hope to see you at Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Tune in next week for all the dirt from Mississippi Thunder Speedway with Thunder Talk on the Winona Sports Network. Thanks to Arcadia Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram.